Hey there, Internet. So today I'm starting a new series where I interview different people in the film industry. And today I have screenwriter Tyler Tice, who did Night Shift, one of the most Day popular day shift. Oh, my God. Here I am at 6 a.m. in California time. So I'm a little tired. But Day Shift, one of the most popular films on Netflix, it broke records and it is not a franchise or a sequel or anything. So I wanted to talk with you to learn more about this. But first off, let, let's start. What, tell us a little bit about your background and, and how you got into script writing. Uh, my name's Tyler Tice. Um, I've been writing for like 20 years. I uh, started when I was in college, on and off. So it takes a long time. Day Shift was the first thing uh, I sold which was in 2017, I believe, was when it first got optioned. So about 17 years <laughs> it took. Uh, uh, right now I am in Fernandina Beach, Florida, and uh, I, I don't know. That's, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. Can you talk a little bit about the script and what got you inspired to write it? Um, I always uh, enjoyed the, the, the trope of the band. Well, first of all, I should say that um, – when I set out to write the script, I was living in Los Angeles. I had been there for like six years trying to make it. Uh, nothing was happening. I just got married, had my first child, and I was about to leave. And uh, <clears throat> and I actually did leave. But before I left, I was living in the San Fernando Valley, and that's when I had the idea for Day Shift. And it was uh, – I always liked the trope of the vampire hunter. I, I was watching a movie with a vampire hunter in it, and I was like, you know what? I want to write something about a vampire hunter, but there was never any – good reason why they were vampire hunters and there she is oh <laughs> this is kennedy oh here's your tablet i got it all ready <laughs> yeah hey you want to sit on the floor do you so you said you were inspired by a vampire film what, what yeah was i the think movie? it was i think it was actually the um the what we do in the shadows uh Movie, oh yeah, not the TV show. Mm -hmm. And there was a vampire hunter in that. And I was like, I always loved loved vampire hunters, like from the Frog Brothers, the Peter Vincent. But they never had like a reason, a good reason. Like you know, you I, I loved Buffy too, mm -hmm. and she was like the chosen one, or it's like you know a family thing. And so, but I'm like, what if it was just money? What if it was a job? Like these mm -hmm. guys were exterminators. And um, at the time, I was living in the valley, and the valley's a weird place. And I was like, I'm gonna make it take place in the valley. So that was kind of. Uh, the genesis for it. And then shortly thereafter, I moved back to New Jersey. I, um, playing with a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> Here, watch your show. Watch your show. You do the sci-fi film next. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so then I moved back to New Jersey. I, I started going back to school, um, to be a history teacher. Cause that was my plan. My wife was working, uh, days. I was going to school at night. So I was watching my son a lot and he was sleeping a lot. He was like, nine months old, I think at the time. And I'm like, you know what? I had that idea for that vampire movie. I'm just going to write it and I'm going to enter it in every competition. So I wrote the movie and I entered it in every competition I could find. And I eventually ended up winning the grand prize in slam dance and everything just kind of rolled from there. Well, congratulations. That's how I first heard about it too. And I kind of got excited it was before anyone who'd been attached to it, but I saw Netflix grabbed it up. And I said, wow, I've been to slam dance before. You know, I want to know more about this movie. Um, so what tips do you have for writing a script that breaks the Nielsen ratings, even though it's not a sequel or franchise? Oh, I think that that's the answer in the question. I, I, I don't think people want sequels or franchises. I know Hollywood plays it safe and they know that they'll have a built in audience for that. But I think more people want original material. I, I, I'm not into sequels or franchises. So I, you know, that's, I just think they want original ideas, something new to people. I don't think people want to watch the same old thing, but Hollywood's not green lighting that stuff. So it's tough to get in doing that. But, but, but I do think that's what people crave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, in a way it's like they want the familiar with the actors, but something original and new with the yeah. story. Well, also at the same time too, Day Shift is, I mean, it is a vampire movie, which, which people like and and i never wrote a vampire movie because they were it was so oversaturated and it wasn't until i was ready to give up that i was like i'm gonna write a vampire movie but it's you know you have the familiarity of brand vampires people know the rules they know the world to a certain extent and then there's just a new twist on it mm -hmm. so. very cool so what first got you into script writing what do you remember what your first script was uh I, it was a script called Familiarity Breeds Contempt. I wrote it in my early 20s. I actually, I think I started when I was in college and then I dropped out of college and, and, and continued writing it. 
Um, what initially got me wanting to be in the film industry is when I was a kid, I watched this movie, um, The Big Picture. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's with Kevin mm -hmm. Bacon. It's a Christopher Guest movie. I remember watching it with my sister when I was a kid. I was like, oh, people make movies. And I always love movies. So that kind of always made, ever since that, it's like 1989, I think I saw that movie. And ever since then, I wanted to be a, a filmmaker. And then I went to uh, school. I was a film major. And I was... Ter I'm just not technically inclined, so I was just ter I was a terrible director. And this was in the, in the late 90s, so we were still shooting on both Bolexes, 16 millimeter, and cutting by hand and everything. I remember like cutting myself and getting blood all over the film. <laughs> and uh, I had a screenwriting class. At, I went to University of the Arts in Philadelphia, and uh, we were required to take a screenwriting class. And I was like, oh, this I like, this I really like, and I, I was good at it. And the teacher always used my my scripts as examples. So at that point, I really focused on screenwriting. And after that, I, uh, I was a PA on a, on a horror movie that shot in Brooklyn. And um, I saw the filmmaking process, and I'm like, I don't really want any part in this. I just want to write movies. So mm -hmm. at, that, at that point, that was like in 2003, I think they, sh they were shooting that movie. And I was like, from that point on, I just concentrated on screenwriting. And How did your script go from concept to creation? Like, I know you said you... You had moved to New Jersey and you were writing it late at night, but did you take like index cards and did you, did you break down the outline or? Yeah, I usually do index cards. I, I just, I got these right here. I get these free things in the mail from St. Jude's. They send me these, these, oh. <laughs> these things. So yeah, I usually, I usually do cards. I'll outline it in a notebook. I got, I got tons of notebooks. I, I'm very, in, and I don't go onto the computer. Like you see, I got them all here. I go back and forth to different notebooks, different notebooks. I'll go to the cards. Then I go back to notebooks. So, so that my process is all over the place. And it's not till it's like officially like ready to go onto the script as I, and that's when I put it on the computer. So it's by the time it's on the computer, I've already essentially done like a few drafts in, in notebooks, nice. uh, but how it went from concept, I, I can tell the whole story about like how after slam dance, I was, uh, I went out to LA, I won slam dance. I flew back to New Jersey. Um, the guy that runs slam dance is this guy, Peter Baxter. And he calls me up one day. It was like two weeks later. And he was like, um, yeah, Tyler, I've been trying to get you representation. No one wants to rep you. He's like, but I really like your script and I think I can do something with it. So I'm going to option it myself. And I said, okay, cool. Yeah. And so he optioned it for like a thousand bucks. Um, and he took it out and he, br he was bringing it around town, checking out different directors. And he brought it to, um, Sean Reddick and Yvette Yates from Impossible Dream. They did like Get Out and Black Klansman. And um, they saw it as something bigger. They saw it as more of like a high, because cause Peter was like, you know, I liked it because it could be real low budget or it could go, you know, bigger. So um, he brought it to Sean Reddick and Yvette Yates and they saw it bigger and they kind of passed it around town. And they were actually at a birthday party. It's like they're, they brought their daughter to a, a birthday party and J.J. Perry, who's the director, was there with his daughter. And... Um, and they, he's like, oh, I heard J.J. wanted to direct because he was, a, st he was a, st a stunt guy and a second unit guy. So they pitched it to him, and he liked it, and he read it, and he loved it. So he came on as the director, and uh, he would call me up. And, I mean, at that point, like, it was a lot smaller, the original version. It was more of like a, like a horror dramedy, I would say. It wasn't as action-packed. So he just saw the, the moments of action and wanted to expand on that. So he would call me up, and he'd be like, uh, let's put it more action in this part. He'd like send me a bunch of videos, be like, I want a car chase in there. Let's do a car chase. So at that point, we worked it, worked it up, made it more action-packed to the point where it got to where he wanted it. Then we brought it to Chad Stahelski, who you know made all the John Wick movies, who's like JJ's buddy from back in the day. So he brought it to him, and then he wanted to produce it. So he came aboard, had his own notes, and then that's kind of how we got into Netflix through Chad. To got to the point where he liked it, then we brought it to Netflix. Uh, ended up at Netflix. I did a few more rewrites, and I got taken off the project. And they brought on a bunch more writers, and and it is what it is now. It got, yep. I think it, the budget was like a hundred million or something. So Jeez. <laughs> a lot so bigger than all, I ever imagined it. Yeah, so it's kind of about getting different people attached to it to build up, you know, the yeah the presence of the project in many yeah. ways. And every time someone becomes attached, they have new notes. So, so, you know, it was just me and Peter at first, and then it was a vet and Sean and they had their own notes. And then it was JJ who had lots of notes and then Chad had notes and then Netflix had notes. So it's this constantly changing thing until they inevitably bring on another writer. They, they brought on Shea Hatton plus a bunch of other uncredited guys. As a writer, you need to be very humble in many ways as a script writer, yeah. that the thing is going to change and yeah. there's not a lot that you can do to, you And know. you got to accept that. If you don't accept it, you're not going to get it made. So Exactly. Yeah. 
Um, so you mentioned Slam Dance being the top contest that you submitted to. What other script contests do you recommend for aspiring script writers? I always like I'm a big fan of script contests. I know a lot of people don't believe in them, but I've heard from managers that, that they're great. It's a backdoor into the industry. And I'm not a particularly like Greg Arias guy. I'm not, I'm not a schmoozer. So I just figured, you know what, I'm going to write the best script I can write and I'll enter in all these contests. So I always um, I always entered Slam Dance. I think Austin is a really good uh, one. There's uh, the Blue Cat competition, which is really great because uh, they always, no matter who you are, you enter it, they'll give you a full page of notes. So even if your your script sucks and it doesn't make it, you'll get a full page of notes from a professional script script writer who will, uh, you know, that you can you can take it or leave it. But I, I've always found it uh, very very effective. Um, the screen craft competitions are good because because they break them down. So they'll, they'll have like a horror one, a comedy one. So it's more you know direct to what you write. Uh, and then there's always nickels. But I've never written anything. Yeah, you know, I'm more of a genre guy. So that's more like hard drama. Um, yeah, message the movies. <laughs> you know, Academy Awards really nice is a hard yeah, one. To yeah, break and into. if you win nickels, you get like thirty grand too. So <laughs> yeah, you know, it's yeah. always good to look at the prize money. I know, like you, you know, the the goal isn't the prize money, but if they're offering a lot of money, you know they're legit. Like Slam Dance, the prize is ten grand, and which at the time was awesome. I like bought like a bunch of sneakers and fucking <laughs> I don't know. I just bought <laughs> got tattoos and stuff. Like it's stupid, <laughs> but um, but uh. Yeah, and Blue Cat was like ten grand. I think yeah, Nichols is like thirty five grand or something like that. So so I feel like that's important. If you if you like say it's like the the Rhode Island screenwriting competition and their grand prize is like two hundred and fifty bucks. I mean, you're probably not going to get a lot of heat from that. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, do you have a certain time of day that you like to write? I know you mentioned with day shift, it's more uh, you were writing more at night time because you had the baby. But do you tend to write during the daytime too? Or Day now. Like- I mean, I have four kids now, so it's just like it's 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 whenever I can. And I, people are like, how do you find time to write? I guess the shorter answer is I really don't. Um, right now, I've actually been because I have a my, I have my youngest is like two months old, so a lot of times she'll wake up at like three thirty. I'll go in her room, I'll feed I'll feed her, get her all set, get her back to bed, and it'll be like around four or so. And I just come in my office and start writing then. So I'll write from like four a.m. to I don't know. My kids start getting up around like five thirty and stuff. My two boys who are older and go to school, but I don't really have to start getting ready till six. So I'll have like a good solid two hours to write. And then I get in there, make them lunches, take them to school. And by the time I'm, I'm home, it's like eight fifteen. Um, I, uh, my wife is usually here. So she, she watches the other two kids and I'll have like a good solid, like, I don't know. I usually come home and eat breakfast. So I'll have like from like eight thirty nine o'clock till, till around like noon, I can, I can get in a good solid three hours of writing. And then like afterwards I can go back at like maybe three, if I need to three, make, get two hours then. And then sometimes, I mean, I go to bed real early. I go to bed like eight o'clock, but yeah. uh, sometimes I, after we put our kids to bed, they go to bed at like seven. So I'll put them to bed and I can get in another two, three hours if I really need to, but that's really hard. So. Yep. Yeah. So I, I find try- it's harder for me to write at night too versus early morning. Um, in my younger years, I used to write like I'll be right. I was writing it like all night. I would stay up late and write, but I, I can't do that anymore, especially with children. I'm I'm out. Like last night, I stayed up till like nine o'clock, and I was done. Like I was just cooked. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Um, do you have any writing rituals or ways to avoid procrastination? Um, I don't. <laughs> I I one thing I do, and 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 that is different than what a lot of people do, is I always put on something. I have a I have a TV right in front of me on my on the top of my desk, and I always watch a movie. I I always watch movies or TV or something. I always have something on while I'm writing, and I've always done that. And uh, or or sometimes I'll listen to music too, but usually I'll have something on. I'll start my ritual by putting something on and watching something. Maybe having a cup of coffee. Um, depends what pro- part of the, um, the process that I'm in. If I, I'm doing outlining, sometimes I'll smoke a little weed uh, to, to start my, my, uh, my process. But like right now I'm kind of deep in the trenches writing. So I've, I've, I'm not doing that right now, but like for the, 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 the outlining and the, the concept coming up with, I do like to smoke weed. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, inspiring. Yeah. Um, yeah. I find it. I find if, if, if it's, uh, I don't think I could do this if I didn't have weed, like day shift would have never happened. It offers a different perspective in many ways. Yes. If you're looking at the same material over and over again, and then you have a change in perspective on it, I think it can help. It's uh, what, very true. What's it's, very, it's like getting a new person to look at it. <laughs> yeah, that as well. Yeah. 
do you use Final Draft or do you yes. use other software? I've, um, I've always used Final Draft. I, I, yeah. I have like friends that swear by like movie magic screenwriter, <laughs> but uh, I've always used Final Draft. Final Draft is the uh, is the industry standard. I had one like my mom bought me uh, like my first edition of Final Draft like in the early two thousands for Christmas, and I used that till I wore it out, and it wasn't even working anymore. Then in two thousand fourteen, I won a competition, a writing competition, and they gave me new Final Draft software. So I was like, oh, so I've been using that ever since. Yep. It is the the best in the industry. I've tried Celtics before. I had like a project get corrupted. I have a friend that uses that. Yeah, I I, I wish it would work better. I wish there was another one, but uh, it seems like Apple's got a monopoly on it. Until one yeah. day, they say, this is only for Apple TV projects now. <laughs> yeah, I know they'll do that, and you're like, oh well. <laughs> um, do you recommend any, any books on script writing? Um, I haven't read any in a long time, but. Back in be, the beginning, the one I liked the most, and and I can't swear by this because it's been like 20 years since I read it, but it was uh, Making a Good Script Great by Linda Seeger. Mm -hmm. I always liked the Linda Seeger books. I remember they like in college they pushed Story on Us by Robert McKee, but it reads like stereo instructions. <laughs> yeah. So I, I would um, – I always – I had a – I took um, – when, when I, I – after college, I moved back home to New Jersey, and um, – I took a lot of screenwriting classes in New York. I would take the train into the city and I took classes at Gotham writers workshop. I don't even know if it's still around, but they had like a lot of screenwriting classes and, um, I would use, and, and I had a teacher there that always recommended Linda, Linda Seeger books. So I read all her books. It was like making a good script. Great. And it's like making a great script, even better or something. <laughs> but, but I always thought they were, I always remember those being the best ones so, Yeah, and just I, read a lot of scripts. I, I think finding, Finding a, a script that because because there's different ways of writing scripts like movies I love I'll read the script and I don't like the way the script's written I don't like like camera directions and, and and stuff like that in a script I feel like a script should be easy to read like a novel and I always liked um I always liked uh, the Cohen brothers how they wrote and uh, Alexander Payne and what I would do is I would get the scripts you know when I went to college they would have like a script library. And and so you could get the hard script out, and I would sit in front of the TV, and I would put on the movie, and I would read the script while I was watching the movie, and uh, nice. just kind of you know how I kind of figured it out. And I find I will often, if I'm trying to write a scene, I'm trying to do a certain action that I don't know how to write it. I'll look toward a movie that has the same action, find yeah, how they wrote it. That's a good it. idea. Yeah. Say, okay. Well, this is how they broke down the sentence. Let me change in a couple of adjectives or something. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, no real way to. Uh, there's no like set rules, you know, you just have to get it across. You just have to get your point across in a, in a certain format, but like how you write the action and everything. Um, I'm a big fan of, of James Elroy who wrote like um, LA Confidential and, uh, and uh, his novels, the way he did it, when he wrote LA Confidential, it was originally 3000 pages. And they were like, we need you to cut it down to a thousand pages. So you got to cut out like one of the plot lines. And he's like, fuck that. I'm not cutting out a plot line. So he just made the sentences really short. He, did, yeah. he, he just shortened all the sentences. And I feel like the way he writes his sentences, it translates well to screenwriting. So I kind of mimic his that when I, when I write scripts. Nice, nice. Uh, do you have any other tips or ideas for aspiring writers who want to break in? Uh, I mean, just, just be ready. I mean, it's, it's a fucking crapshoot at the end of the day. You know what I mean? It, 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 you know, like with me, it's just like I got – it's like everything just kind of happened – the way it should have, you know what I mean? All the planets aligned and, and I got in there, but at the end of the day, I had a good script. So just fucking write, just write as much as you can. Just learn your craft, just make your, you know, just be as, what is it like opportunity meets preparation. That's like the definition of luck. And, and that's what you have to do. Cause, cause there's no, there's no set way. I, I think entering competitions is really good. Um, as far as, as it was for me. Um, but, at the end of the day, there's no set way. Just be a good writer. That's all you can do. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, is there a sequel in preparation for Day Shift? I've heard rumblings, but there, there's nothing, um, nothing yeah. confirmed. I don't. You know, they could, I could, they can make a sequel, and I could have nothing to do with it. You know, it's up to Netflix. But uh, the nice thing I have is I have that story by credit, which means no matter what they do, I get paid. So. <laughs> and there you go. Uh, I'm set. So anything they, as long as they're using my characters that I created, then I get some kind of money out of it. So that, that's cool. I don't know if I'd be the guy to write it. I don't know what they're going to do with it. They can take it any direction they want, but you know. Well, I hope they bring you back on if they do decide to do a sequel. Since you yeah. have a contempt for sequels, I think you'll make it really good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind. I mean, sequels are, there's some, been some good sequels out there. 
you know, yeah. some sequels are better than the original. You know, Empire Strikes Back was Terminator Two. Star Wars. Terminator Two was better than the first. Yes, yes. I mean, those um, <laughs> those are the two off the top of my head. I feel like a Lethal Weapon Two is better. I don't know. I don't really remember the Lethal Weapon Two movie, <laughs> movies, but I remember liking Lethal Weapon Two a lot. Um, what else are you working on? What's next on the horizon? Uh, right now I'm just kind of juggling a bunch of projects. You know, I have one that I, I have a manager and I'm kind of developing one with him step by step. He's really good with development. So he's kind of prepping one that's like ready for the marketplace. It's very Hollywood. Um, then I kind of got my passion project on the side that I've been working on that I've been coming actually really close to finishing. So I've been concentrating more on that. I don't know if that's the right move, but I really like it and I think it's good. Um, I had a, a meeting on Monday with, with, with some stunt guys that are trying to direct and they have a really cool idea that I, I'm probably going to step aboard in writing. And then just like a, a pitch, like it, people send you stuff and they, they, they want like pitches for it. And which, which I don't particularly like doing. Cause, cause at the beginning I, my, you know, my, my reps would be like, Oh, they want to do this. They want to pitch for this. And I would go out for every single one and it would take weeks to come up with this pitch and I'd write it and do it, everything. And then nothing would ever happen. And then I, my agent told me, he's like, yeah, they never give that those to like newer writers. They'll just get, they'll like get a hundred pitches and just give it to one of their friends. So, mm. so I don't know, but I, it's, it's just, it's a juggling act. I have like 30 different things going on. Exactly. Never just one script, many scripts kind yeah. of working in tandem. I wish there... it was just one script and I could just concentrate <laughs> on one at a time. Totally. But... Yeah, no, I think it's always better. Um, any other last comments or questions, things I didn't get to ask you that you want to mention or talk about? Uh, no, I think we pretty much covered everything, you know, just, just write. That's, that's my, uh, you got to get your 10,000 hours in, get master the writing. Cause you know what? Uh, uh, even when you write a good script too, it's like, you'll get it in there and then you have to do a million rewrites and then you have to like, and then it's like 140 pages and then you got to cut it down to 120 and it's like, all this shit that like you have to do professionally is like stuff you did when you weren't making any money. Like I know how to cut down scripts, you know, because I had to cut them down to enter competitions. So it's just, it's just, just right. And just then right at the end of the day, the Watch actors change the line anyway, right? Exactly. They they changed, that. Yeah. Like, I mean, most of the day shift dialogue was, was ad libbed on the spot. Like I, cause I had to read, like I read all the, because we had to go through arbitrations for credit and stuff like that. So I read all the, uh, the, the scripts that came after me and half those lines weren't even in them. Like they were made up right on the spot. We were actually, we were at the premiere because the, the day shift premiere. And I, I never met that dude, Shay Hatton who rewrote it, but I met him for the first time. He was sitting right in front of me. He's a nice kid. Um, but we, my, uh, I, I, and I met my lawyer for the first time too, who I've been working with for <laughs> like two years. So I'm there with my lawyer and my manager and we're talking and he was mentioning the, the, the twilight line in the movie. And he's like, did you write that? I'm like, no, I didn't write that. And they were like, we turned to Shay. I'm like, Shay, did you write the twilight line? He goes, he goes, I wrote kind of it, but then Dave Franco took it in a new direction. So it's just, you know, they're just going to do what they're going to do. And I, I feel like it was better for it. So definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much for your time, Tyler. I really appreciate it. And everyone, check out Tyler Tice. You got a website? Or no. You got the Instagram. <laughs> I got Instagram. If you everyone want to see a lot of pictures of my kids and my dog, you can. <laughs> well, it, it helps to build it all up, though, because next yeah. time the, the manager's like, he got like 40,000 followers now. <laughs> yeah. They want to see how he's writing with the baby, you know, yeah, yeah. two at once. I got to find, I don't know where the hell she went. I don't know what the hell she's doing. Uh -oh. so. All right. Well, I'll let fire. you go. <laughs> yeah. Have a great day. And, you too. Thank uh, you. Keep up the great work. Yeah. Bye.